Welcome back to another episode of the Mile 40 Podcast. Thank you all for continuing to tune in. Today's episode, I can already tell, is going to be my favorite episode, hands down. And just so you guys know, I've interviewed my wife on here, uh, but this is hands down going to be my favorite episode for so many reasons. The individual who I'm featuring today has truly inspired me from the day I heard her name. About one month ago, we both crossed the finish line at the New York City Marathon. I went on to Instagram and I saw this reel and I had to keep clicking play to watch it over and over and over again. To date, it's been hit about 40 million views and that probably doesn't do it enough justice. Today, I'd like to introduce you all to Kaylee Williamson. Kaylee actually wrote a book, which I purchased for my daughter um, earlier this week. And the book is called It's Cool to Be Me. Um, And in the back of this book, she's got a wonderful little bio. I'm just going to read some of it so they have some of the information on you, Kaylee. Kaylee Williamson has completed for competed for over 15 years in Special Olympics in both area and state competition. She lives in Austin, Texas, and is an active member of the Macbeth Recreation Center GNAC program through the city of Austin. She has completed six half marathons in both Texas and Mississippi. She is the first person with Down syndrome to complete the Austin Half Marathon, the Decker Challenge, the 3M Half Marathon, all in Austin, as well as the Rise and Shine Half Marathon in Mississippi. Sandy, Kaylee, thank you both so much for joining me today. Wow, that bio is a little out of date. Well, tell me, fill fill us in here. How many have you done now? You've done 20 half marathons instead of six. 20? Wow. Full marathons and 21 miles of Boston. Wow. Wow. Unbelievable, Kaylee. I'm, you know, I I said this before we, we got on here, but. A month ago, I didn't know your name, and now you're a name that I'm never going to forget for so many reasons. Um, you know, I've been reading this book to my daughter, and you know, in these short few pages, you say so much with so little words just to inspire everybody to take the cards that they're dealt and know that they're capable of just so much. So let me just ask maybe you, Sandy, to start. If you could just give us some quick background here with regards to um where things got started for you um, on on this endurance challenge, if you will. And then I'll, I'll go on to Kaylee from there. For us, it started around 2014. Kaylee was diagnosed with Graves' disease. She had prior to that hypo, and then it was diagnosed to hyper, which is the Graves' disease. She had a blood platelet condition. She was 215 pounds, and she was pre-diabetic. And um, also had sleep apnea. At that same time, my mom had had her second massive stroke. And I took a look at our lifestyle and started making some changes. And one of them included cardiovascular exercise. And obviously, for us, running was just easier. You go out your front door, ran it. You do have to have those right shoes on. But it was something that we could do together. I had already started running in 2013 and by 2014 had run my first full marathon Mm -hmm. and it just we started with 5ks and the opportunity presented itself for her to do a half marathon i figured she would say no but she said yes and it continued on from there to where we are today we have an um, an incredible (laughs) wall of medals behind you uh and so we see it all right here kaylee how are you feeling after New York? What was it like for you experiencing that finish line? I was tired and then my um my, my muscle was getting cramps inside my leg and then my ankle. Were you proud of yourself? And then I was and then I and then I was proud of myself and then I and then I did it. And then cool. I did my mom and dad. Um, m- m- my grandma carried me at a different time. Um, um, I did um y- 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 you're my granddaughter. I need you. I need you crush it this race and finish. Uh, and uh, um, y- you're my granddaughter. I, uh, let's push. 
current. And then, uh, and then we uh, cross that fifth line, and you will must proud of yourself. And mm-hmm. we're also proud of you. And you mentioned your grandmother, and I know that she was such an important part of your journey. And I had listened to you speaking on the podcast with Rob Simulcare at New York Roadrunners, and um, you know the impact that she had um, with you as you were journeying through the crowds across the five boroughs. Do you want to tell us a little bit about your grandmother? My grandma, she passed away two years ago. And then um, she was sent me at uh, the, the uh, letters. Grandma still sends you letters, yes. S- and, Sandy? Uh-huh. Was it, was it your mom, Sandy? It was my mom, yeah. Got it. My, my mom was diagnosed in 2016 with Alzheimer's. Got it. And uh, the decline was rap- was pretty rapid. She passed away in January 2021. And so Kaylee gets letters from grandma because, you know, yes, January the 30th. Yes, you're right. 2021. And so for Kaylee, we we all, you know, we handle death so differently. We learn to live with those that we lose Um, for Kaylee and individuals with Down syndrome. It is forever present. They don't really it's hard for them to decipher through those emotions. And so she gets letters from grandma so that she continues to have hope and grandma lets her know how she feels and everything. But, um, it's, uh, it's been a difficult time and running has actually been that one thing that's kind of helped us deal with those emotions to, uh, work through that loss. That's so, that's so, so special. Um, and I'm sure those letters are just so near and dear to your heart and, and the messaging just must be so important to you. Um, and, you know, I, I think you, you've taught us all a lesson about, you know, keeping those messages, um, you know, within us and, and guiding us through, uh, you know, every moment of our lives and, um, you know, watching you employ them, um, across <laughs> all these races and all these endeavors, um, you know, just inspires everybody out there. Um, Sandy, I want to ask you, you know, with regards to, um, uh, how, how you, um, have worked with Kaylee both on and off the course over the last several years, um, to work together to cross these, you know, one finish line after the other. Right. Um, and, Simultaneously, Kaylee, maybe after she answers, you can tell us um, what's up next. Any other races on the horizon right now? Lord have mercy. Races on the horizon. We have a half marathon next weekend. Oh, wow. We have another one in January. We have the Austin half February. And and then we are on the December, on the uh, 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 on the 10th. Decker is December the 10th, and Decker has some really massive hills in it. So does Austin. Uh, and then, uh, yeah. and then, and then, with this, uh, to, uh, to uh, going back to, uh, to uh, New York City, um, on uh, March, on the 14th. March 17th. Are you going to run the New York City half? Yeah, there, yes. there's some discussion about going back in March uh, okay. to do the New York. But, but I just want to let you know that uh, uh, March is my birthday. March yes. is your birthday. March what? March the second. I can be okay. turned 34. Okay. 34. That's amazing. Well, maybe I can see you there. I plan to run that race as well. So hopefully I can see you that day. Okay. So training has been thinking outside the box in a lot of ways. Um Things like instead of wearing a weighted vest, we paint rocks together and we put those rocks in backpacks and, you know, we leave them strategically throughout our neighborhood um, every so many miles. So you're starting with about 10 to 15 rocks in a bag. And um, as we go, we're able to take one or one of the rocks out. And, you know, for us, the last couple of years have been so difficult with a lot of loss with my mom and neighbors and pets and friends. Um, My my friend too. Yeah. And so we wanted recognizing that to implement in our training, something that would give others hope as well. 
And so we, every so often we'll see a rock that we've left on the Facebook page or something saying, you know, I lost my sister yesterday and look what I found. So it's been kind of our training, but also something we do as a mother and daughter to paint rocks together, to have our mother daughter time outside of training, but then also bring hope to other people. Um, We go to the farmer's market together. We try to find fruits and vegetables that are, you know, something that we may not have used before. It's become more of a mother-daughter endeavor um, because as a parent, you are that living example for your child. For me, it was letting go of my need for perfectionism, for worrying about what everybody thought because we were at the back of the pack. I think for me, that was the biggest struggle because if you've ever done races, you know, you're always worried about your time. You're worried about getting to the finish line and, you know, how fast you did it and everything. And for us, it's like we know we're going to be the back of the pack. We know we, we might have to move to the sidewalk. The one thing I will tell you about my daughter is, you know, even in Boston, she didn't quit because she wanted to. She quit because we talked her into it. Yeah. Um. Because of all the the pain she was in. So you kind of learn to just live in that moment like we got to do in New York. Um, New York was such a beautiful experience because we knew that finish line wasn't going to be taken down. And we knew there were going to be people there to greet us. And that allowed us to be on the course and be present in the race. Dancing, high fives, hugs, you name it, she did it. And, but I got to sit back as a mom and see her embrace all of that and see people embrace that with her. And it was amazing. But for training, it's, you know, it's me letting go of my perfectionism. I lost my uncle. You lost your uncle too. Yeah. We had a lot of losses. Mm -hmm. Okay. Hey all, it's me, Bishoy. As a marathon runner and endurance athlete, I've come to understand the importance of properly fueling your body for preparation and recovery. Every day you get a shot at success. How you start your day typically paints a picture of what the rest of the day will look like. Start your day with a super convenient, healthy, and delicious nutritional win. Meal one by Creatures of Habit. Overnight oatmeal packed with 30 grams of plant-based protein, chia, flax, and pumpkin seeds. Vitamin D3, omega-3s, a probiotic, and digestive enzymes made in under one minute. Stop wasting time or worrying about what to eat as your first meal of the day. Start with meal one. Visit creaturesofhabit.com, creatures spelled with a K, and use code MILE40 for 15% off a one-time purchase or the first subscription order payment. You gave me some goosebumps as you were talking there, Sandy, and I'm flipping to the page in the book right now. And it says, the moment my mom saw me, she told the doctors that I was going to achieve things that prove them wrong. And I can tell (laughs) that when you wrote this book, you probably didn't think we were going to be talking about half the things you've achieved (laughs) since then. And so, um, Kaylee, I can see the emotion in your eyes. I can tell how much you love your mother. And for me, you know, yeah, I can see it and I can feel it. And it's so special. And, and same Sandy, the way that, you know, I see you looking at Kaylee, um, the both of you are just such a pure light and an example and a source of inspiration for so many. Um, And I, I want you to know that. And I want you to know that if I could do one thing with this podcast, it's to spread messages specifically like yours. So I'm, very, very grateful for that. I have one one more question for you, Sandy. Did you ever in your life think you were going to run this many marathons yourself? No. After I finished the first one, I said no more. I, I was that one and done. And when mom passed and Kaylee said, I want to do one to honor grandma, I thought, I can't say no. And then the opportunity for Boston came up and I was, you know, that's just something you don't say no to. And then the mention of New York, I mean, these are races that you you just don't say no to when you get that opportunity. But, you know, it also allowed Kaylee to have, you know, folks see what's possible because we've had so many people come out and say, you know, I signed up for this race because we've seen her out here um, and things like that. I will tell you, 
I haven't raised Kaylee to allow people to put caps on her. I haven't raised her to, I've always told her, you don't allow the, the, the opinions of others to become the myth that defines you. And, um, that's been something that, you know, I've struggled with growing up and I didn't want her struggling with it. So she definitely has superseded anything that would have been on my radar for even for myself. So I always joke with her because she's at 20 half marathons and she thinks with each one she's going to beat me. And I'm like, I'm at 30. Mm. And no, she's mm. done she's done two full. I've done three. So but she's still working to catch up with me, right? Yes. Yes. Um, but I want her to do it with pride in herself, not pride in anything else, but pride in knowing that she she put her foot out there at the starting line and she put every step to get what she needed to get to that finish line, even before the, the race ever started. That sentiment could not have been more evident, you know, in, in what I saw and just in speaking to you all. And I have zero doubt in that. And I want to make sure that we celebrate all the wins all the finish lines and all the work that you've done, um, the work that you're doing to raise awareness for Alzheimer's. You've done a fantastic job and I have no idea you're going to continue to make an impact there. Um, and I, I want to make sure you know how proud I am of you personally and how proud we all are of you. And, you know, we're here for you, Kaylee. We're rooting for you and we can't wait to see you cross so many more finish lines. Okay. Before I close out, I just want to ask, is there anything else, Sandy, that you'd want to share with the community? Anything, Kaylee, that you know you want to pass on in, in terms of your message? Anything that you're thinking about right now? I, I think my one message is we see ourselves as human. We see ourselves as each person belonging. We've had those races where we've walked up and people have just openly stared. And, you know, it made me realize that for Kaylee and individuals, you know, who might be uniquely different than the rest of us, you know, they have to prove themselves when they walk up to that starting line. We don't have to do that. And when we start seeing each other as being all together and accomplishing things together and belonging out there together, that would be something amazing just to be able to see that. Absolutely. Well, thank you both so much for the time. Kaylee, keep going. So proud of you. I can't say enough. I can't say it enough. Hands down, this is the best episode I've ever done a Mile 40 podcast. So thank you. You made me cry. I just want to tell you thank you. Thank you. You got it. <laughs> <laughs>